Okay, verses like this here in my Bible, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding weight of eternal glory. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who is real, making Jesus Christ real to us. We don't understand. We are not there when you are crucified, Jesus. But through your Holy Spirit, he will reveal and help us to comprehend the depth, the height, the width, and the length of the love of God. Thank you that the love com- com- compels us. Father, to declare your oracles, it compels us to live for you in spite of what we experience in this temporal life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Um, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 says, when Apostle Paul, after writing a lot of letters, that is one of them, the letters that he wrote when he was in prison, he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and be a partaker or understand and be a partaker of the fellowship of his suffering. Why did he want to be identified with the suffering of Christ? For what? It's high time church that we understand and have a proper perspective over suffering. There is suffering that is inevitable that the church must go through. There is a certain level of suffering that we must not go through. But today is so shocking in the world that people are preaching that people must be free, they must be free, they mustn't suffer, which is a fallacy. In the book of Romans, the Bible says if we cannot suffer with him, we cannot reign with him. So there is a level of suffering that you have to undergo as a child of God. Say amen. <laughs> you don't have to say amen because a lot of preachings that have been going on, they are making, producing kind of powerless people in this world. Suffer. There are certain reasons why people should suffer. One of those reasons, suffering has got a tendency of helping you to release your inner strength that can never be released in any other way but through suffering. Number two, the, the suffering, the suffering helps you to remove a certain level of arrogance and self-reliance and self-dependence and self-esteem, self-exaltation, self-consciousness and all those self. And the ecocentricism, suffering has got a, a tendency of taking off from us. That's why Jesus Christ suffered. Are you following? We must produce disciples here, 10 tests of a disciple. One of those, Jesus Christ said, when you, you follow me, you should take up your cross daily and follow me. Any other gospel is from the, the kingdom of darkness. There is a level of suffering, beloved, that you have to go through all of us. For us to be strong, to be fortified from within us. That you may know him this morning. Apostle Paul, in his writing to the Corinthian church, he said, for this cause we faint not. Which cause is that? What is the cause? Verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up. <laughs> together with the Lord Jesus Christ. So for this cause that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, we faint not. And then here there is a a statement that is somehow controversial because it says, we faint not. Um, Though the outward man is perishing, he admits that the outward man is perishing, you are aging, you are getting old, and the time you are getting old, you are actually coming closer to your grave, you know, and on this earth, the time you are born, you have started to die. So when a child is born, they have started to die already. What you call growth, according to us, is a process of death. (laughs) Okay, let's leave it, because, yeah, anyway. (laughs) 
May the Lord help us. So we faint not because he was raised from the dead. So even if we go through suffering, we have this understanding that he was raised from the dead, he will be raised from the dead. That consoles us. That strengthens us. That fortifies us. So you, when you are going through something that you don't like and is painful, it's good, it's painful, yes. Take that and take Jesus and put him here and look between the two. <laughs> These light afflictions, he says, these are light afflictions, according to this text. And again, he says here, these light afflictions, they are working for us. They are not working against us. Whatever you're going through, it is working for you. A far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. There's what you call the weight of glory. Jesus. That nature, the doctor of God on us. So if we celebrate the term, this is spiritual warfare. Last time I said there are three things that are very important as our ritual or our practice. Number one is the communion table. Number two is the baptism in water. Number three is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You cannot negotiate on those. You must be filled in the Holy Spirit. We cannot compromise on that because it is the Holy Spirit that will strengthen us even if we go through painful circumstances. So what are we doing this morning? We are declaring the lost death until he comes. Number two, we remember him that he rose from the dead. If there are sick people, they want to be healed because as he shed his own blood, remember, it's not, not the first time in Gethsemane when he was shedding his blood. The first time he was eight, eight days old. When they circumcised him, they removed his foreskin. That is the first time Jesus' blood was shed. That's why Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, Circumcise yourself, remove the foreskins from your heart. That is the first time Jesus' blood was shed when he was circumcised. And the church does not mention that because the devil has made the people to be oblivious. They only speak about the seven shedding of the blood in the New Testament. But we know him when he was born after six days, according to the Jewish, eight days, according to the Jewish culture, he had to be circumcised. And that is traumatic to a child. Yeah. Uh -huh. Circumcision is painful for a child. And it is not necessary. Of course, for healthy reasons, yes, they say it eliminates and, uh, possibilities and reduces the probability of uh, receiving or getting infectious sexual transmitted disease and all those things, but it doesn't completely eliminate infirmities and sicknesses. That's why in this province, we've got the highest percentage of HIV AIDS, though people are circumcised. <laughs> But the circumcision of the heart will eliminate all diseases. Yes. So our insensitivity, our foreskin of insensitivity in our heart this year, it must fall in God. So that you become pliable before God. When the Holy Spirit touches you, you are not becoming a diplomatic VIP in the presence of God. You can lay on the floor and cry in the presence of God because you know that this is very important because you are circumcised. The reason why people are not baptized is the Holy Spirit. Most of them, they are not circumcised in their hearts. And the church tried to justify that. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you are none of His. That's how important it is. So, this morning, as you drink the blood of Jesus Christ and take His table, let's understand, beloved, that the light afflictions are not compared to what Jesus Christ went through. We faint not, we don't be slight. Not because we don't want to be slight. You feel like be exciting, but you have to translate because Jesus Christ never be slight on the cross. You say, if it is the will, Father, let this cup pass away, but not my will, your will, our God. I want you to be very strong and have step on faith. Don't be moved by small things, small temptations, and you don't worship Jesus. He went through more than what you can think or comprehend. Be strong in your spirit. Put your right hand on your chest as I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you this morning. Thank you that you're doing a deeper work this morning, Father. All pride, everything goes, gone. The weight of glory is over us. Not the weight and the sin that so easily entangles us. We cast off those things. But you embrace the clock of your weight. Through the refining fires, I speak to somebody's heart, Father, that you encourage them this morning in the name of Jesus. You went through so much for us. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your strength. 
Thank you for this love that is speaking even today. It does not seem to speak better things on our behalf. The better covenant that is translated us from death into life. Thank you, Father, we let you declare, declare victory over every family represented here. We tell the devil that he has no power, he has no authority to cause anybody to faint here, to cause anybody to be silent here, to cause anybody to be despondent and give up in the name of Jesus Christ. For the fire says here, cause your disciples to be here that will take their cross daily and follow you, Father. Cause the true people, not Christians, disciples, Father, in this place, in the name of Jesus, I come against disease, sickness, I come against HIV, I come against any disease in the blood, anemia, I come against any disease, shortage of iron in somebody's blood in the name of Jesus, speak to the skeletal system right now, your blood flashes out every bacteria, every fungus, every influenza in the mighty name of Jesus, this morning we declare that you died, you rose from the dead, you conquered the grave, you make it the public spectacle of principalities and powers in disarming them on the cross of Calvary, Thank Thank you, Jesus. We declare your victory in the second heaven. We declare your victory in the third heaven, in the first heaven, in the underworld, in she world. You died, you rose again, the only chosen son of the living father. Thank you, mighty father. Thank you, everlasting God. Thank you, Prince of Peace. We have the victory because you are on our side. We appreciate you. There is none like you anywhere. We cannot find anybody like you. A man, what man of love that you can lay down your life for us. You have bestowed this life over us. Then you are called the sons of God. You are not aliens. We are not our orphans, Father. But you are adopted in the family of the beloved. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us of our insensitivity, our foolishness, our stupidity. May you forgive us of ignoring the Holy Spirit, the nudge of the Spirit of God. May you circumcise our hearts so that we feel the parts of your heartbeat. We may feel the soul winning business that Jesus Christ died for, healing the sick, casting out demons. Almighty Father, help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Fortify our bodies, fortify our spirits, fortify our souls. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I'll ask Elder to come and help me. And um, the deacon at the back, my smart deacon, that is always smart. Let him come here and help me with the, with the elder. So it is the body of Jesus Christ that is broken for us. Remember, it is not torn, it was broken. Yeah. There is a difference. Hallelujah. And his blood that was shed for us. But he's speaking better things, better covenants. Hallelujah. Uh, we may receive his body, receive his blood. As our custom is, we wait for one another. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father.